Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is currently 1.34 a.m. on this snowy, there is somebody walking in my neighborhood, on this snowy Thursday evening going into Friday. They're like carrying a backpack and stuff. I wonder what's going on here at 1.30 in the morning. Anyway, <laughs> let me just tell you, the next time that I, um, it is 21 degrees outside, it doesn't feel that cold, but it is that cold, and I'm gonna tell you why I know. The next time that I tell you guys um, that I want snow, <laughs> remind me in the comment sections, don't forget, Peter, that you have to clean off your car. Because, see, my husband parks in the garage, so he never has to clean off his car. But I have to clean off my car. And this is the third time today that I have cleaned off my car. And my fingers, because I was stupid enough not to bring out gloves or mittens, are like, they feel like frostbitten. <laughs> so, but the car is completely cleaned off, as you can see. All the windows are going up and down and everything like that. But the reason I'm stopped here in my neighborhood to show you guys, I want to show you my street because I literally just woke up, I don't know, like, oh, I think it was about an hour ago. I caught the last, I always, when my husband's watching a TV show, like when he binge watches a TV show, I always catch the very last episode. And so he was watching the very last episode of Paris and Love. He like binge watched the whole thing and the last episode's her wedding. Well, it's her two weddings. She had her traditional wedding and then she had a neon, a neon, disco wedding or neon something wedding. So anyway, but I watched the last episode um, with Alex and the dogs and stuff and it was real sweet. I was holding on to Boo Radley the whole time. But anyway, um, so I woke up and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna go vlog. And I was actually just gonna sit in the driveway, but I think most of the roads have been cleared because the snow has been stopped for a while. But let me tell you what's interesting. So I was sitting there and I was going through my emails, right? And we get emails from our homeowners association, like the management company. This is what we pay uh, $452 for a month. It used to be, what was it, 431? And then they raised it this year, it's now 452, okay? And this is what we pay for is snow removal. So there was an email that was put out and it said, the snow is supposed to stop at 7 p.m. It's 1.36 a.m., okay? The snow is supposed to stop at 1 a.m. So the rule is, per the management company, that um, they don't clean the snow until the last snow fall, snowflake has fallen, right? So they were like, the snow is supposed to stop at 7 p.m. We have asked that um, they come out there with their trucks at like eight o'clock to clean so that people can like get their driveways and stuff ready for tomorrow because a lot of people are like gonna be, you know, coming and going tomorrow, right? So I come outside. <laughs> Completely snow. The, the road is still completely. This is how much snow we got. You guys look. Isn't that crazy? But the streets are completely snow filled. I mean, I'm sure. And and this is. And honest to God, this is not a complaint. But I'm sure that the um, the trucks that are like clearing neighborhoods and stuff have a lot to do. I'm sure they do. Um, especially because we haven't had a snow this, a lot this year. But they usually come through like right after the snow is done. Like they usually do. And I'm like, why are we paying so much money? I don't really care, it doesn't bother me because I just put my car in four wheel drive and I'm set to go. But for my neighbors, it concerns me because like a lot of my neighbors, um, like they can't even get out of their driveways and stuff. Like I wanna, sh like here, let me just show you like this driveway completely just snow, right? And a lot of my neighbors are between the ages of like 70 and 85. So they have a really hard time getting out. And also, I don't want my neighbors out here <coughs> shoveling their driveways and their walks. I don't think it's safe for them. So, anyway, there's my complaint for the evening. It's also my complaint when I get to like the other streets and then the other streets are completely plowed and ours is like the only one that isn't. Like that's when I'm like, what's the problem here? Like with it, like see, come up here and then the street is completely plowed. I don't get it. The street is fine. All these streets are completely plowed through and cleaned. <laughs> 
anyway, <laughs> it just, I, it, it doesn't really bother me. It's not like, you know, they're going to clean my clock car or anything. What concerns me is for my neighbors and for their health, because a lot of them do get out there. And then I see, you know, my neighbors that are 80 that are shoveling their driveways and that concerns me for them. So anyway, um, I wanted to see how bad the roads were. I went today to Richie Woods and um, Alex worked from home today, but he went out for just a little bit. And then another friend of mine was like, um, yeah, the roads aren't bad if you put the car your car in four wheel drive, which I have. Oh, I wish that hadn't just turned on. Because my mind was so clear. Um, these roads are clear as well. Um, I mean, they're not clear, clear, but they're like, they've been plowed. I'm going to be really interested to see what happens once I get up to like the main road. Because these are like the side streets. Yeah, and all of these neighborhood side streets are, are all clear. It's always ours. It's like the only one that isn't. So I went to Richie Woods today and I did a walk in the woods because I wanted to record it, how pretty it was and stuff like that, which I'm really happy that I did that. I have to tell you something funny. I was actually going to, like when I pulled out, I was going to stop like at the Humane Society right over there and I was going to record the very tail end to it because when I was recording it, I was talking about how people always say, that like, oh, it scares me for you when you're out there by yourself because of like, you know, serial killers and you're always out there by yourself. And the one time the person was like waving in the background and I'm like, strangely enough, like I'm never afraid out here. And so there were two cars when I got there and I didn't see anybody else in the woods. And one of the cars was kind of snowed over and, um, I was, I was like, where are these people at, you know? So anyway, when I was leaving, if you watch the video, there's like six or eight people that all of a sudden are just like walking over there. And I don't know, they didn't come from a car. Like they didn't pull a car out there. Um, so I don't know where they came from. They must've like been on like a long, like outside hike or something, you know, in the snow, I guess. But literally, as I um, pulled out, this police officer comes, like, barreling down the street, hauling down the street, and, um, yeah, these streets are pretty clean. I mean, they're not perfectly clean, but they're pretty clean. Um, so, this police officer comes barreling down the street, right? Hauling down the street into Richie Woods. I so bad wanted to turn back around and go back in there and find out what was going on. I was like, what is going on in Richie Woods with this police officer? And I literally missed it by like two minutes. So I hope somebody wasn't trapped out there or missing or like they had found their car or whatever. I don't know. But the other thing that I wanted to say or to address was somebody, I was talking in my video yesterday, I think in my vlog, I was like addressing comments and whatnot. And I couldn't remember, I was talking about the cooler on the side of the road and I couldn't remember, if somebody said this in the comment sections of the videos, I haven't read the comments from today's video yet. Um, there's so many plows out here and they're doing like the strip malls and the Walmart parking lot and stuff. Everything is cleared. Discount tires, Verizon, strip malls, everything's clear. Uh, I mean, there's snow on the ground, but it's cleared up. So anyway, I was like, when I was driving over to uh, to go to Richie Woods, and then I went and I turned around and I came back, and then Tanya had called me by then, so I stopped by the kennel. It is so beautiful at the kennel. So, so pretty out there. It's actually really pretty right now. My windshield is like crystal clear, and I can see straight out of it, and it's like... The sky is like really different colors. It's really pretty and the snow is so pretty on the ground. But anyway, um, so I like passed that. So I was like, what did somebody tell me to do that was similar 
to, when I saw the, the cooler on the side of the road, then everybody was like, you need to look in the cooler and see if there's a head in there, like the movie Seven and stuff. And I couldn't for the life of me remember what people had told me to do. And I was like, what was it that somebody told me to do? And then like today I was like driving by that Arby's and, I, and that van is still there. And I was like, oh my God, I totally remember that somebody told me that I needed to pull over and look inside that van and see if there was somebody frozen inside there. Somebody said, go look in there, there might be somebody frozen in there. Well, first of all, you have to understand where this van is, okay? It's literally, if you live in Indianapolis, it's off of 116th and Allisonville. It's the Arby's that it sits. The Arby's and there's like a Jiffy Lube or some kind of like Jiffy Lube kind of oil change kind of place sit right in front of like the dollar store and like a Mexican restaurant and Goodwill and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it's right there in the open. And there's this van that has been sitting on this little side road turn in right there. It's been sitting there for, I don't know, like over a week now, longer than that. It's been like a week and a half, hasn't it? And so I'm like, what is going on with this van? I'm really kind of surprised they haven't towed it yet. But if it's there tonight, we're looking. <laughs> we're gonna look, we're gonna do an investigation of the world. Even though I'm scared. See, I could do all that kind of stuff. I could do like true crime investigations if I had like somebody with me to do it with me. That's not the, the problem isn't doing it. Like if I have somebody with me like Tanya, I'm fine, I'm good to go, right? It's when I am by myself that I get scared. I actually get really nervous just watching shows. I had kind of forgotten about that. Like I'm watching that, the woman in the window across. So this is what I did last night. <laughs> I stayed up way too late. I watched three episodes of the woman in the window watching the girl, the woman in the house watching the girl in the window. I think that's what it's called with um, Kristen Bell. First of all, I love her so much. And like, I was talking to Tanya about this today and cause Tanya loves this show. And she, I was like, I can't believe you love this show but you couldn't get into The Good Place. And she's like, yeah, I couldn't get into that show at all. The Good Place is such a fantastic show. It is such a great show. And, um, and it's such a feel good show and it ends so well. And I just have to say, as far as commentary on the meaning of life and commentary on what is our life supposed to mean and represent and afterlife and all of that, I think it does, it has discussions about that in such a fantastic way um, that really address all of those issues. I have to tell you, like this is gonna sound crazy, but I have like, I don't have it as much as I used to have it in my 20s and I don't definitely not have it as much as I did when, before my mom passed away. But I still have a fear of death. Like, fear of dying is like one of my biggest fears. And it's more so like not knowing what afterlife is like, right? And that show, I mean, I know it's a TV show and there's nothing, you know, accurate about it. But just in kind of like having even the conversation really kind of helped me a lot. I don't know, like that show helped me. I loved that show. And um, so anyway, and the characters were fantastic in it, and Ted Danson was so great in it, and um, I mean, every character was just so good. So anyway, I started to watch this show, which is called The Woman in the Window Watching the Girl, The, the Woman in the House Watching the girl, Mr. Or girl in the Window, or something like that. Okay, if you read the book, The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn, it's like almost exactly the same story. Like I said to Tanya today, I said, I don't really know what the difference is except for that it's a parody. But it's not like 100% of the time a parody. There's also like a mystery that is occurring inside of it. So it's kind of like this, it kind of reminds me of the backstory of The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn, which they made into a movie with Amy Adams, which I thought the Amy Adams movie was not very, I didn't think it was fantastic. Um, but it's kind of like if The Woman in the Window met only murderers in the building. That's what it reminds me of. Like, where is that coming from, I wonder? Hmm. 
Um, oh, it says Diamonds Direct. <coughs> All their lights are flashing on the outside. I wonder if somebody broke into the Diamonds Direct and stole diamonds. Wasn't me. Um, but it very much kind of reminds me of that. Like, I don't want to give you examples because you have to watch it, but like in the movie or in the show, it's very much this, the exact same background as the woman in the window. Like she's a child that's died. Heavy, 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 heavy drinker. And, but like the way, <laughs> I mean, Tony and I were talking about this today. The way that the daughter died in the TV show is like, you guys, it's out there. <laughs> it's like out there. And um, and there's like other things like that. And then there's just like some back and forth with like, <laughs> it's just, it's, so like one of the things is she makes these chicken casseroles and she drops like, like she's constantly dropping these ki chicken casseroles. Oh my God, the Thorntons is closed tonight. What is going on with that? Why is the Thorntons closed? Um, She's constantly dropping these uh, casseroles, right? These chicken casseroles that she makes. She's like this, what are those called? Those Cornell something kind of like dishes. Somebody tweeted it out to me tonight. But anyway, um, it reminds me so much of my childhood. Like my mom used to make like chicken casserole and uh, tuna, tuna casserole and those dishes. Like I totally remember them with cornflakes growing up. <laughs> it's like a can of like, you know, cream of chicken soup, chicken, noodle, like stroganoff noodles and like cornflakes. That was like, I remember that growing up. Or tuna casserole, which I did love tuna casserole. My mom would make it with like broccoli and tuna. I loved it back in the day, even though I don't like fish. I know it's strange, but I did. Tuna was kind of like the one exception that I could eat. Um, Cause I liked tuna fish salad sandwiches too when I was growing up. I also liked them at Subway for a long time. Oh my God, I would go to Subway and I would get a tuna fish salad sandwich. I remember when that turned for me and I couldn't do it anymore. Um, well, first of all, I had somebody that I knew that worked at Subway and they're like, don't ever eat the tuna. And I was like, what are you talking about? And they're like, it comes in these bags and it's really disgusting, don't ever buy the tuna. And that was kind of the first thing for me, but then like I got the tuna one time and it was like pink, it was like bad. There was something, it was like gross. And that was like, after that, I was like, I could never get the tuna fish salad sandwich from um, Subway again. But for a long time, I would go and I would get a foot long tuna on whole wheat, not toasted. And then I would get two piece, or pieces of pepper jack cheese, tons of lettuce, onion, green pepper, black olives, um, yellow mustard, and a little bit of mayonnaise and a uh, black pepper. And that would be my tuna fish salad sandwich. This is where they plow all the snow into like the middle of the road and you can't get through it right here. There you go. Um, but then this road is like perfectly clear. I'm like, I don't know if you can see this, but it's like clear. So anyway, um, My mom used to make that tuna casserole back in the day with the noodles and everything, and I loved it. So, uh, but this show is really good, but it's so funny. Like, there's this one scene when she goes to see this woman. So she's trying to solve this. She sees something. It's very much like Rear Window, which if you if you read the book, The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn, it's not so much in the movie. Well, kind of, but if you read the book, it's more so. He like references so many old movies and like Igmar Bergman movies and Alfred Hitchcock movies and Rear Window is one of the movies that he references. People thought he copied the book from Rear Window, but he didn't. It's like referenced a lot in the book. And um, and actually his second book, he, so if you don't know the story of A.J. Finn, it's like he lied about who he was. It's this whole really weird story. He like said that he had been like the press editor or something for J.K. Rowling and that he had gone to Oxford and all this kind of, none of this was true. It was so bizarre when it came out. And so that's why they like put a hold on the movie. The movie was supposed to come out like a year before it actually did or a year and a half before it actually did. And um, so his next book, if you listen to the audiobook, at the end of it, they did an interview with him and they asked him 
um, what his next book was. It just started snowing again. Um, and he likes to base his books on movies that like are retrospectives. And so his next book was going to be based around the movie Chinatown, which I think is Jack Lemmon. Is it Jack Lemmon? Not Jack Lemmon. Um, Faye Dunaway and um, what's his name? The guy that was in Charms of a Deer Mount. Why can't I think of his name? My mom always thought he was so sexy. Dude, I'm talking about Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. Um, and Faye Dunaway. You know, I've never seen that movie, Chinatown. I need to see that. Um, so anyway, his next book was going to be focused around that. But I don't know if he's going to put out another book or not. But there's this one scene when she goes to visit this woman. And she brings this casserole. And she looks at the woman and she goes, do you like casserole? And the woman pauses. And there's like this long pause, you guys. It's like literally like 20 seconds long. And she goes... I love casserole. <laughs> it's real funny. But it's like funny like not supposed to be funny. Like I don't know. I mean it is supposed to be funny. But it's like. It's real like dry dark humor. And if you don't like that. Like you won't like it. It's not like slapstick let's tell a joke kind of humor. It's like. <laughs> it just like it parodies all these other like movie tropes. And um. So. But at the same time, being real, so you don't, like, know, like, what's a joke and what's not a joke. And, um, she's, like, a super heavy, I mean, like, she's nailed alcoholism in this movie. I mean, like, she, or this show, she's, like, a super, super heavy drinker. She drinks, like, wine. That part actually reminds me, the part in this book, like, this almost, like, in some pieces seems more accurate to me than, um, yeah, it's, like, snowing hard now seems more accurate to me than the movie The Woman in the Window with Amy Adams. And I love Amy Adams. But, like, oh, the movie, or the book, was, like, a really intense mystery, but more, like, not, I don't know how to explain it. It wasn't lighthearted, but, um, so, yeah. So, I'm four episodes in, and when I get done vlogging tonight, I'm going to listen to a little bit of my audiobook, because I'm almost done. And then I'm going to listen, to, I'm going to watch the other episodes. I'm hoping maybe I can finish it tonight, but I don't know that I'm going to stay up that late. Each episode is like 25 minutes, so that's like two hours. So I don't know that I will stay up that late, but they're so good. Everybody keeps on telling me they hated the ending. <clears throat> Tani didn't say that. I said, did you finish it? And she's like, yeah, it was good. And I said, and um, she also told me that I should watch a show called The Wolf and Me. I guess it's on Peacock. She said it's really good as well. Um, Tani can go through a show like nobody's business. She and my husband. Like, when did Alex start Paris in Love? Two days ago or something? And he's already done with it. I will tell you one thing, though. I love that song. I loved it back in the day. That, um... Do crazy. The eyes are blind. That song by Paris Hilton. But if I ever have to hear it again after watching that show or having that show on in the background, it'll be much too soon. I mean, they play it like nine million times in the show. Kim Petras sings at her um, wedding, and so does Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato sang, sang and I will always love you. I and Paula Abdul performed too. I guess she's a close friend of the Hilton family. I, um, I was going to say I like Demi Lovato. I'm really indifferent to Demi Lovato, honestly. Like, I've never been really that wowed by her music. I know there are people that are, like, diehard fans of Demi Lovato. She doesn't really do much for me, honestly. Um, you know, people always want to know, like, what I think about California Sober and now that she's not California Sober and what I think about all of that and blah, 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 whatever. You know, it's kind of hard to have an opinion about somebody that you really don't have a lot of investment in to begin with. And I don't really have a lot of investment in Demi Lovato. She's not somebody that really highly interests me, honestly. I don't know why. I don't know what it is about her. Her music is fine. It's okay. Um, I, I just am not somebody that... Like, I was watching, it was interesting. I thought it was really interesting, the, the musical choices. So, Kim Petras was singing the music, and I'm not a huge Kim Petras fan either, and she was singing, like, the Eyes Are Blind, or whatever that song is, World Is Blind. She was singing that song, and then, um, 
when Paris Hilton like walked down the aisle or right before she did. And that was, it, it was fine though. She did a nice version of it. And then Demi Lovato sang an I Will Always Love You. And then they danced to a Bruno Mars song. I don't know, it just was weird to me. Like, and then she had Diplo perform at her, dis her disco. I will tell you this, and I don't like to speculate about people's weddings, but they're a public figure, so I don't really, I mean, it's whatever. I don't get the feeling this marriage is gonna last. They are very interesting to me, and he, if you watch the show, he comes across as very controlling. And then there was also this scene, and I don't know, like I said to Alex, I said, that's kind of weird, don't you think? And he goes, yeah. He reads these text messages between his college roommate and him at the wedding. And the text messages are like, the college roommate says, this is so weird that you're marrying Paris Hilton. Like, you were obsessed with her in college long before you ever knew her. And he's like, was I? I don't remember. And the roommate's, he's reading this at the wedding, okay? And the the roommate's like, and he's real goofy kind of too. Like, I don't know. It's interesting to me that the, the pairing of them. And he says, the roommate says, yeah, like, dude, how do you not remember that? Like you were obsessed with her. You talked about her all the time or something like that. And, um, he was like, well, I guess it was meant to be. And I'm like, this is kind of weird. And then Paris says something about in her vows that her mom and his sister were trying to get them together for years. And I'm like, it almost kind of seemed a little forced to me. I don't know. It's just interesting to me. Um, I didn't realize by watching this show, like, you know, you see Paris Hilton, like, in the public eye and stuff like that. But you don't really know, like, what it is she does. Or, um, I mean, you know, she makes perfume and DJs and all this kind of stuff. But it's like, you don't... Oh, th that's what I was going to say. When she goes and does this neon wedding thing, she seems, like, so more in her element... Although, I will say this. Paris Hilton is a gorgeous girl. I mean, absolutely beautiful. And she almost, like, she has a lot of, like, classic looks on this show where she wears her hair, like, kind of parted on the side. That first wedding dress that she wore with the lace that was made by Oscar de la Renta, that dress, stunning. Absolutely stunning. I mean, all her dresses were, she had, like, six out dress changes or... She had like five at her traditional wedding and then she wore this pink dress to the neon wedding. And it was cute. And he wore like this suit that matched, just like blue and hot pink suit that matched. It was like a track suit. It was cute. Like they looked cute together. Um, kind of. I just, I, he's not super attractive to me, but whatever. Um, I mean, that's not why you marry somebody, right? So, but he just seems kind of controlling. He's always kind of like, Paris, come on, Paris, Paris. And she's always running behind. That is kind of like one of the things. But, um... So, I'm like watching this. I don't know. What was I going to say? I was going to say something about that. Oh, about realizing I didn't know, like, really what she did. Like, she goes to New York Fashion Week. So, she has this kind of meltdown moment. And she goes to... I actually watch more of this show than I thought I did, I guess, right? Um, do you ever, like, your husband or wife is doing something? <laughs> like, yes, probably you husbands right now that your wives are watching my uh, vlog in the background. And you're sitting there, I don't know, looking on your phone through TikTok. And you're acting like you don't... Uh, you're not listening to this vlog and you know you are. Anyway, <laughs> your partner just looked at you, by the way. Okay. So, but you know, like that, like, so my husband watches these shows and I always kind of pay attention a little bit in the background of what's going on. So she has this meltdown after she goes to New York fashion week and she's got to do all these pictures and all these looks. And she always walks in the blondes fashion show and stuff like that and does all this and does all that, which by the way, I forgot like years and years and years ago, I followed the blondes and they followed me back and I was so excited, but that was, like, a long time ago, though. <laughs> I don't know if they do anymore. Um, but she does do a lot. Like, she has a lot going on. And she has, like, assistants and hair people and her glam squad. I mean, she really does. I mean, she's running, like, major businesses and stuff like that, you know? And and she likes to work. She says that in there. She's like, you know, I don't want to... He wants me just to sit at home. Like, she's, like, sitting there and she's, like, doing all of these things that... When you watch it, you realize, like, in the context of fashion or in the context of music or whatever, right? Like, I mean, no, she's not, like, how do I say this without being mean? Within the, within the world of, like, DJing, like, 
Paris Hilton is not taken super seriously. I think she's taken more seriously now than she... It stopped. I was saying that. I think Paris Hilton is taken more seriously now than she was a few years ago. But, like, I don't think, like... It's not like she's ever going to book a main stage at, like, DJing at a music festival or something. I mean, people just don't take her that seriously, you know? Um, <clears throat> so, anyway... And her dad says something about she used to get paid to go out to nightclubs and now she gets paid or, and then she learned to get paid to DJ because they were hiring DJs or something, just making it like the only reason that she was doing it was to make money, which I think we know is not the case. I think she really does love music and the world of music. I think she really, really does. But just because you do doesn't mean that you should become a DJ or that you're good at it, you know? But anyway, so... um and I actually like several of her songs that she's put out. So I don't think that her being a singer is, a, you know, bad. Um, God, Broadway Boy is completely dead tonight. Completely. I wonder if they were open tonight, though, like the bars and stuff. And they just recently, well, no, because they would be open right now. It's not that late. I keep on turning the heat down. I kind of remember nights like this back in the day. Like the bars being open. I can remember us going out to the bars sometimes. Or am I... Am I thinking that and that's not the case? Am I making that up in my head and that, no, that was not the truth? It is kind of like flurrying outside. It's pretty. So anyway... But like she has like this... Like legit some serious business responsibilities, you know? And um, I was going to say opportunities, but I meant responsibilities. And so... He's like, he calls her on the phone and she almost kind of, she doesn't seem annoyed, but it's almost kind of like he doesn't take her seriously. And she's like, and he's like, mommy, daddy and the gang need you home. Like, we want you to just leave New York and come home. And like, she's like, he just wants me to sit at home with him and the dogs and have babies. And she's like, and I want that too. But she's like, I also love to work. And it's like, because of what she does, it almost comes across like he doesn't respect what she does for a living. Which who knows, right? So, be interesting to see what happens down the road with them because she seems to be awfully in love with him. And he seems to be eerily obsessed with her. <laughs> no, she, he seems in love with her too. Um, <laughs> but you know how my mind works. I'm sitting there watching this and I'm like, oh my gosh, like... This is like he was obsessed with her like in college back in the day, but it's very kind of the same thing with uh, What's her name? That was on Dawson's Creek that played Joey. Why can't I think of her name that ended up marrying um, Tom Cruise and she was in love with Tom Cruise when she was growing up Kate something what's her name? I love her anyway um <clears throat> And before I knew that Tom Cruise was crazy, I probably would have married him too. Because I thought he was so good looking back in the day. Oh my God. Bum, 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 bum. You could not watch Risky Business and not think that Tom Cruise was good looking back in the day. I wonder how old he is now. He's probably like five or six years older than me. Do you know he got his movie break in the movie? I think this was his movie break was Endless Love. Uh, with Brooke Shields, and he was the one that gave her ex-boyfriend, David, the idea to set her house on fire. He was like a friend of his that played football with him. I remember watching that movie over and over and over when I was a kid. I probably shouldn't have. But my parents weren't really big into censorship, and I can remember watching that movie. And my dad had the album, and I have the album at my house now. And my dad had the album, um for Endless Love, and there's a piece at the end. When, why is this car just stopped in the middle of the road? What is going on here? And, uh, I don't know what's going on there. And, um, there's a piece at the end when David, Brooke Shields, um, I need to watch that movie again sometime. He reaches out, or he tries to find Brooke Shields, she doesn't want to talk to him and the mom says something like you know like you have to let her ha go her way and if it was meant to be it was meant to be and whatever and that part is like on the album like they're talking 
and then it goes into like the reprise of Endless Love and I can remember listening to that as a kid and not understanding it but knowing that it was like so deep there's a car there's a van there a car at the park not the park that I go to but a different park just sitting there completely covered with snow how people aren't lost up in the parks somebody asked me they said can you um, camp out in those parks and stuff I don't know about that I I don't think you can like they lock the state park that state park Richie Woods they lock it there's like a gate in front of it which most of these parks they don't do that but Richie Woods they close the gate at night it's like an electric gate I mean you could walk around it and get in it's not like they lo it's not like Richie Woods is fenced in you could walk out and get in it but as far as the road they like the, the electric fence goes in front of the road I don't really know what the point of that is except for to have people drive back there I guess and something I don't know has Tom Cruise made a movie lately I don't know what is that girl's name that he was married to? Why can't I think of it? So, yeah, you guys. I am down to... Well, I started listening to Bonnie and the Bonnie and Clyde book, Go Down Together at Three Times Speed. Which is, like, I still am like... It's so funny. Like, it must be narrated really slow or something. Because, like, I am having... I'm not having to rewind it. I'm having no problem hearing it and remembering everything that happens at Three Times Speed. But I'm down to like an hour and 20, I think I've an hour and 40 minutes left to listen to. Um, it's a good book. It's really a good book. It's interesting because I feel like somewhere along the way, so it's Clyde Barrow and Bonnie Parker. I feel like somewhere along the way I had heard about the Barrow Gang, like Clyde Barrow and the Barrow Gang, but I didn't realize how much of like that made Bonnie and Clyde famous was really truck um, was really about Clyde and the gang, and that Bonnie was just kind of like part of the ride along. She drove the getaway car. Some, they didn't really let her do a whole lot. I think at the end of the book, because it's really now down to Bonnie and Clyde, I think it's really going to be just the two of them. But like they always have somebody working with them, like always. And I guess I just didn't realize that. Like, I mean, like I said, I don't know much about them. Um, it's very fascinating to listen to it. I, I have to tell you, it's like, I don't read it as if it happened in 1932 or 33. I read it as if it's happening today, which is kind of strange. Um, it's also interesting how enabling the family is. Um, and it's not just Clyde. It's also his brother, Buck, and Buck's wife, Blanche, and all these different people. Um... The, I just got to the part where they're talking about at this part, at this point Bonnie and Clyde are wanting to like hide out somewhere and so they go to uh, <clears throat> Pretty Boy Floyd I can't remember where he is, I think in like Houston and he thinks they're idiots, like he doesn't want anything to do with them and then they also reference John Dillinger who actually by the way I think is from Indiana or died in Indiana and um, John Dillinger also thought they were idiots. That they were like a bunch of kids that just robbed like grocery stores and stuff like that. And they didn't take them real seriously. And so it's interesting that the public persona was that they were these glamorous, you know, bank robbers. Of which they did rob some banks. But they really only killed people when it wasn't like they were these murder I mean they were murderers but it wasn't like that was their intention like they really if you listen to it or you read the book they only murdered shot people like when they had no other I'm, I'm not excusing this I'm just saying this is what's their intention the only reason that they shot and killed people was to get away like it wasn't like they were serial killers or murderers or just you know gunning people down left and right um, although pretty boy Floyd one of his issues with them was that 
they didn't have much consideration for the public at large because they would just like shoot out into the public and stuff like that, which I thought was interesting that he said that. <clears throat> um, but yeah, it's really good. It's really, really, really good. I thought by now I would get bored. There was kind of a lull in the, I would say about three fourths of the way through where it just became like, and this person and that person and this person were part of the gang and then they went and shot this up and then this, then they left the gang and then this person joined the gang. And there was a lot of that for a little bit of it, but that, it, it didn't last long. Um, the port, the part that I'm at now, Bonnie, they got in a car accident and Bonnie's leg, she's be carried everywhere now. And, um, like her leg has like been burnt down to the bone and she's like super thin and she's drinking a lot and she doesn't look pretty anymore is what they say in the book and people are surprised by her appearance. Um, the picture that everybody like knows of her where she's like got her foot up on the car, they took all these pictures, they're constantly taking pictures because they were kind of obsessed with the idea of being famous. Um, the picture of her where she's got her foot like up on the car and she's holding a gun and she's smoking a cigar is like this infamous picture. She's, she wanted people to know she never smoked cigars because like women smoke cigarettes but they didn't smoke cigars. It was like this really like taboo thing. And so they didn't see like those pictures as anything different than pictures that they would take at like this fair that they used to go to. So like when you see that picture and you think like, oh, she was such a, you know, like, she was like this hardcore criminal, which she was at the end, but like, I mean, more like via Clyde than anything else. Anyway, it's an interesting book. I'll probably finish it tonight or tomorrow. And then when I do, I'm gonna go into Interview with the Vampire. And then tonight on Audible, I bought The Maid, which is my book for February for Peter's Book Club. And then I also bought, um, I pre-ordered the next Andrew Main book in the Underwater. He's the one that wrote Black Coral. That's the second book in the Underwater Sea Investigation thing, I think. I can't remember. The first one's called The Girl in the Water, and the second one's called Black Coral. And it's about a... Um, a police officer, well, she works part-time for the police department, and she's like a scuba diver. I love this series, but anyway, it takes place in Fort Lauderdale. And the second, the third book comes out on May 29th, and we will actually um, be in, I think we'll be in Florida so when that book comes out. So, <clears throat> I will, like I pre-ordered it, so it'll come right to my library and I can read it then, which I'm real excited about. So yeah, so what else is going on? So did that, stayed up too late, slept in today. Alex, he had planned to go to work today. He's like, if we don't get any snow, I'm going to work. And um, I stayed up to like 6.30, you guys. And finally, oh, well, last night, remember when I said, like, we, I kept on saying we weren't getting any snow and whatever, and then we finally did. So I drove around listening to Bonnie and Clyde. I drove around forever last night listening to it. I mean, like, honestly, like, probably almost two hours. Um, and so, what are these people doing? It's like they're driving down the center of the road, but they've got their turn signals on. It's like, are you turning or are you not turning? I don't know what they're doing. Um, so anyway, I listened to like two hours of the book last night, but then I came home and then I watched like three episodes of that show because I wanted to watch that show and I ate a bunch of crap. I bought all this crap, you guys, and I do not need it in the house. Like, I need it to be gone. And now I'm like, God, I spent all this money. And my husband is like, he's so sweet. He's like, baby, he's like, you don't have to eat it all in one setting. I'm like, I know, but I want to. Last night I ate a bunch of chips and dip. I'm like, is that alarm still? I, I did a circle and listen, I'm back here at the, the Diamonds Direct. And not one police officer or anybody is there to come check on the Diamonds Direct. Well, if you're if you're wanting to rob someplace, <laughs> Diamonds Direct, they don't check their alarm system very often. 
it is kind of interesting to me that nobody's come out there to check on the alarm. But, um, so I had, uh, uh, just basic Lay's, are they Lay's? What are they? I don't know what they're called, but the, the Ridge <laughs> chips have the ridges in them. And then, um, the French onion dip. And, uh, what else did I have? I had some of those pretzels that have chocolate on them. I love those so much. Those thin pretzels with chocolate on them. But I did the ones that had caramel and chocolate. They weren't as good. I like. I got the dark, the dark chocolate ones were the ones I was eating today. You guys, I ate so much crap in the last two days. Um, I wanted to make pasta tonight, and um, with this vodka sauce that I had bought at the grocery store, and. Um, for Alex and I was like I'm gonna make this tonight and then I was gonna have like noodles and um, I got this Rotel Ro Rotel is that what it's called that spiral you know the the spiral pasta I was gonna have that with like butter and stuff tonight so I was real excited about that but then Alex wasn't really hungry and then I got done with everything and I was I watched one episode of my show and I had my five layer bean dip <laughs> and more dip and chips and I sat and, and um, I also had bridge mix. This was such a healthy dinner. Bridge mix, which is chocolate and you know nuts and grapes and all that kind of stuff, covered in chocolate and, and uh, malt balls and all that kind of stuff. I had bridge mix, and then I also had the thin pretzels with dark chocolate on it and a glass of orange juice. That was my dinner. So after I watched one episode of the woman in the house or whatever it's called. Oh, by the way. Because people are like, why does it have that stupid title? That was actually the working title because it was like a parody title, you know? Uh, basically making fun of, like, it was a parody of all these other shows. Because um, it's supposed to be like a parody, like, spinoff of The Woman in the Window and The Girl in the Train. It's kind of supposed to be like that, right? Both of which were fantastic novels, by the way. If you've never read them, you should. And Paula Hawkins, The Girl in the Train, is one of the most fantastic books ever. And, um... Do you know what? I should read Gone Girl. I don't remember that movie at all. Alex and I watched it, and I, like, literally don't remember that movie. But I heard Gone Girl was fantastic. And I do have sharp uh, objects. And I've been meaning to listen to that forever. So maybe I'll listen to that in February. But anyway, now that the holiday's over, I've got so many books to listen to. And cozy mysteries. And i got so many things. So anyway, um excited about all the books. Oh my God, I want to say a very, very happy congratulations to Joelle. So Joelle's been um, feeding out this announcement for like the last week on her Twitter and I was like wondering what this announcement was going to be and then she put it up via TikTok but on her Twitter. Girl, you got me so confused. But anyway, Joelle has announced that she believes that she finished the final manuscript She's got a few tweaks that she wants to make, she said. But that she finished her final manuscript on her poetry book that she was working on and that she's submitting it to this contest and hopefully that like, she could possibly win and then it would get published. But if not, girl, if not, there are other avenues. She said she was thinking about self-publishing and things like that. But you could tell she was getting like emotional on the TikTok talking about it. And I was like, I mean, I almost started crying. I was like, that feeling of just finishing something and completing something is like of, of writing a book and being like, I wrote a book. Like that feeling, you can't explain that to somebody. It's the most surreal thing. It's not like other projects are great. Yes, comparable, sure. <clears throat> but there's something about finishing writing a book. I almost don't even know how to explain it because we live in this world where books are so revered. And I just, I, I was like, oh my God, I love this so much for her. And then she went on to talk about that she, this is not going to be her last book because she has all these books in her. <laughs> she was laughing about how that sounded. But I knew exactly what she meant. It's how I feel. It's like I, I have all these stories in me, you know. 
one of the hard things is I want to start telling some of these funny stories in my life on TikTok, but I'm like, I feel like everybody already knows these, knows these stories. So if I tell them on TikTok, what's the point? You know what I mean? But I'm like, who cares? Like, even if I've told these stories five million times before, I'm going to tell them again on TikTok. But I love that she said that. I love that she said I have all these books in me because I feel the same way. I feel like I have, you know, whether I write another book or not, I go back and forth on it. I feel like I do have all these books inside of me that I want to write, you know? So, um, congratulations, Joelle. So then what did I do today? So I got up today and, um, oh, when I was going to bed last, oh, so, okay. So when I, I stayed up last night and I kept on checking the radar, I would pull in and I would stop and I would look at the radar and it was like edging over, it was like moving over from Illinois. And so I was like, okay, when is the snow going to be here? And I kept on looking like it was going to hit. And it kept on changing. And it said 3.15, then 3.30, and then 4, and whatever. So finally, at about between 3 and 3.15, the snow hit. But it wasn't really that hard. It was just coming down light, lightly. And so I kept on driving around, and I was listening to this audiobook. So I was like, I want to wait up and see this snow. I've been waiting to see snow. I'm excited for the snow. I want to see it. So I kept on driving around, waiting to see the snow. And I went to Zinesville, and then I came this way, and then I went to, drove into, like, Westfield and then Noblesville, and out there, like, it had started to hit. And that was at around, I would say, four-ish. About there, it really started, the snow started to come down. But not even, like, bad enough, like, I couldn't see while I was driving or anything. It wasn't like that at all. Um, it just was really coming down. Where am I at on time on here? I can't, okay, 20 minutes. So, um... You guys were like 21 minutes. Well, 51 minutes for you, but 21 minutes for me. 21 minutes and 25 seconds or something like that. So, 51 minutes and 28 seconds for you. This water tastes so good. I ate all this crop, that crop tonight, and then I woke up from laying down. I set my alarm for two hours. I slept four hours, long winter's nap. And I woke up and I was like, Alex, I'm so, I feel so full from eating all that crap and I am so thirsty too. So, um, I went to bed at about 6.30. I took the dogs out right before I went to bed. And we had only at that point had a dusting of snow. It was like hardly any snow at all. And so when I went to bed last night, Alex was like, he woke up and he said, what's it like outside? <clears throat> and I said, we really haven't had that much snow yet, but it's starting to snow. And he's like, so can I go to work? And I said, I mean, I don't know, babe. I said, it's not really that, it's not really that snowy outside. It's starting to snow though. And he said, okay, he goes, I'll check at eight. So he got up at eight and, um, he like walked up and he like got up and then he came back to bed and he was like looking at his phone and I said what are you doing he's like setting my alarm and I said are you staying home he's like it's bad outside and I was like really and I went and I looked at the window and it was like really coming down hard and I was like oh my god when did this hit so between 6 30 and 8 it really like started to come down so Alex um he worked he got up about I think like nine and he worked from home he made himself coffee and uh, I could smell it when I, I woke up and I was like, is that coffee? I would love if my husband and I worked from home every day together and I like woke up to the smell of like a cup of, or like a pot of coffee in the kitchen. I, there's something very sweet to me about my, my husband making a pot of coffee or making a cup of coffee in the kitchen. I don't know why. It's just like, because you know, he's not there during the day like for that. So for him to like go down in the kitchen and you know, make a cup of, he likes that Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Like for him to go down there and like make a cup of Dunkin' Donuts coffee and then um, like sit there on the couch with his game and play his game while he's drinking a cup of coffee. That just makes me so happy. I don't know, I love that. And so anyway, so he worked downstairs and then I woke up between like, I woke up at like one o'clock, something like that. I slept in, it was nice. And um, he wanted to run out for a second. And I said, aren't the roads like horrible? And he said, um, I think I can get through with it with my four wheel drive because he needed to run out and get something. So he did and then he came back and um, did he work some more. And I was like, how are the roads? And he was like, I mean, they're not good. He was like, but if you have your four wheel drive on, it's fine. And I was like, okay, so um, 
I was like, I'm gonna go to Richie Woods and see what it's like. <clears throat> and the roads were not great, but they weren't horrible. And with four wheel drive and driving safe, I mean, it was totally fine. Something about tonight reminds me of going skiing when I was a kid and the roads would be like packed down with snow like this. Well, I drank one bottle of water. <laughs> So, um, yeah, after I uh, watched that one episode, oh, I filmed a bunch of videos today too. I filmed the Richie Woods video. I didn't do a review. I was gonna do this bark, bark box. I think this bark box that I have, oh, I guess it's the January bark box. I thought it was maybe the Christmas one. Um, they always send it so late in the month. I'm like, why do you send it so late? Why don't you, send I think I just need to cancel it. I like, I don't really want to talk about that tonight, but I'm kind of like, oh, it's still snowing. I'm having a hard time coming to terms with the fact that I need to just cancel this bark box because Tucker doesn't play with the toys. There's only a few toys that'll play with and actually, and the, and the treats, they don't really like the treats in there. So I'm just, I'm really having a hard time with it, but I was going to make a video talking about it. Do you remember how I talked about the stuffed animals that I bought, Boo and Tucker, on Amazon? And how the one came and then it came with a box. And it said it was delivered and everything and I left the message on Amazon. And um, they never responded or anything like that. Do you know what I'm talking about? So I sat there and like, I never opened the box because the box I thought held the heart inside of it. Well, I had opened the box and it had like this squishy thing, but on top was like this box, right? You guys, the box was this big, okay? This big. And when you opened it, it had like this plastic stuff and then the heart sat in the middle of it in this little box, right? It was these stuffed animals that I got for Boo and Tucker that the heart thumps. It goes like boom, 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 right? And so it's supposed to make them feel less alone like when they sleep at night or, um, or when you like, they don't have separation anxiety for puppies and things like that. They're supposed to be good for that. So I was like, I never got this the second dog. I, I ordered a lamb and a dog, right? Well, the lamb came in this like box with a bag and I just like, would, I pulled the bag out and I could see it in there. Well, one night I was sitting there and I was like, I'm okay, since I can't figure out what's going on with this, <laughs> I'm going to open um, this box up and this bag and whatever. Well, I opened the lamb up and like in the opening for where you put the heart was like this box and it had the heart. And I was like, well, if that's the heart for the lamb, what's that box for? I, so I go through that box. You guys, I swear to God, I mean, it was literally like three inches by three inches. It was this little thing like this, okay, plastic that looked like trash, that was like so airtight, vacuum cl closed. I looked at it and I was like, is this, a st could this possibly be a stuffed animal? And so I opened it and all of a sudden, as I opened this plastic thing, I mean, you guys, literally, it was like this big, okay? It's like, and this dog stuffed animal comes out of it. This plush toy dog stuffed animal comes out of it. I was like, how did they ever fit this thing into this vacuum um, sealed, uh, what do you call it, a thing? But anyway, so I have both of those stuffed animals now. And Tucker, he lays with that lambykin, the big lamb. So now it's the lamb is the, the dad lamb, lady, that's lambykins. And then baby lamb, little lamb. It's like lamb family. They are so sweet. And Tucker always just lays his head on it or puts it like this. He's so sweet with it, you guys. He doesn't pay any attention to the dog. I think he knows the dog is uh, Boo Radley's. But he, and Boo Radley doesn't care about it at all. But he's so sweet with it, you guys. It's the sweetest thing ever. So anyway, I'll just do an update on that. So they actually, 
did send them to me. Now we know. Most people's Christmas lights are down. Tanya Jean finally took her Christmas tree down. It's in the garage. Her white flocked Christmas tree. She finally changed out her red and green lights. Oh, I went over to the kennel today. I saw her for a second. She and Nick and Eric were working at the kennel and then she was gonna go home and make chili for dinner. And Nick and his girlfriend were staying there tonight as well. Tanya's like, you should come over and play games and have chili and Well, first of all, I can't have chili because it has meat in it. Come on. And, um, but Alex would have loved to have come over there and had chili, so we probably should have. By then though, when I was going home was the worst of the snow. And they said that. They said like Thursday afternoon the snow was supposed to be so bad. I think tomorrow it's supposed to be bad too. It's supposed to be like blowing snow and super cold. It is 18 degrees out right now. If I pull down this road and this van is gone, you guys, I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna be like, oh my God. When I drove by here earlier though, like the snow was so high you couldn't get through down here. Is it pl plowed now? No, it's not plowed and I'm not getting stuck in it. Um, but I will tell you that the van is still right there. Can we just talk about that for a second? Like, that is rather scary, don't you think? These, like, guys that are, like, cleaning the road are, like, shouting at each other on the road. Did you hear that when they passed each other? I'm amazed at how clean it is. Like, every, that one little road down there wasn't clean, but like, I mean, these strip malls and stuff, like they're over here cleaning it out right now, do you see? There he is. Dunkin' Donuts is cleaned out everywhere, it's cleaned out. It's a winter wonderland outside. I did not bring coffee tonight. I just really wasn't in the mood for it. Isn't that funny? I was like, I really, do you ever feel like completely dehydrated? Like you haven't had enough water for the day? That's how I felt when I woke up. I was like, I need water and lots of it. Well, I took a poll the other day. <laughs> I mean, not really, but I did kind of. And it said, oh, I should have gone through Dairy Queen to see if they have a February blizzard. I'm gonna go drive through there right now. Um, well, this isn't, no, I don't wanna get like a, well, it is cleared. I could have gone, I'll go through there on my way back. Um, I was saying, do you guys mind the daytime vlogs or do you like the, uh, the, the nighttime vlogs. Do you like the longer vlogs? Do you like the shorter vlogs to catch up on and blah, 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 whatever. So every, there were kind of some surprising answers to me. Most people said they like the nighttime vlogs and they like longer vlogs. That was the common theme of what I heard, okay? The other common theme was that you guys watch the vlogs mostly on the weekends when you catch up, which is interesting because that's not consistent with when I'm looking at the views of the vlogs, it seems to me that more people watch them during the week. But I'm gonna tell you what I think is happening that like I didn't even think about, right? Because there's so many of you, there's probably like 20 plus of you, 20, 30, I know a lot of people probably don't think 20 or 30 is a lot, but I think that's a lot for comments on my video. Because there's like 20 or 30 of you that comment like every night on my vlogs and watch my vlogs like when I post them, that I'm like not taking into consideration the people that are watching my vlogs like two to three days behind, right? So there's a lot of people that like, I might post my video on Friday and they're watching, they're catching up on my video. So they're watching my Friday vlog on like Sunday because, you know, the numbers change over a couple days, right? Like by a couple hundred. And so I hadn't really thought of it that way, which I think is why it looks like people are watching them 
during the week more than they're watching them on the weekend, but maybe that's not the case. I don't know. And maybe people are taking the weekend to catch up on videos and stuff like that. This road is interesting, the clearing. Like, it's clear, 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 and then there's something that'll just like jut out right in the middle, like where they just decided to stop clearing that area or something. But anyway, um, and then there's this pickup truck behind me that is like driving off of the center of the road. I don't I'm confused. So I think um, going forward based on all of that, I will just try to consistently um, consistently post longer videos and do nighttime vlogs. I prefer to do the night vlogs. I know that during the day when I'm driving around, I get distracted and stuff like that. The thing is, and there was this long discussion in the comment sections and a lot of people had feedback and I really appreciate it, but people were giving me like, you know, well, why don't you vlog at eight o'clock? Why don't you vlog at 10 o'clock? Why don't you do this? And then you can go to bed at early. So I want to explain this to you guys. Um, and, and this is, maybe it's me making an excuse. I don't know. It's just the truth. Um, I could do that. The problem is, is that many times, I don't think people know this, but my day goes late in the day. So sometimes, you know, Alex will come home at 6.30, 6 or 6.30, and I'm posting videos until 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night. Like sometimes if you look, my drama videos or my purisms videos, they're going up at 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night. Well. I'm still working on thumbnails. I'm still like doing description boxes and waiting for those videos to upload. So I'm sitting right in front of my computer all that time. I'm not hanging out with Alex. I'm not like eating dinner, you know, unless it's just like while I'm waiting for something to upload over an hour. But typically I'm sitting right there in front of my computer so I'm not interacting with Alex or the dogs. So for me then, on the days that I get up earlier, I get stuff done earlier, so no, I'm not going to eight or nine o'clock at night. And so if I got into a regimen of doing that, but you know, that's hard for me. But um, so then what happens is, you know, I get stuff uploaded and then it's let's say eight or nine o'clock at night and then Alex and I are watching a TV show and then I wanna, you know, hang out and rest with my husband. I don't wanna just, upload my drama video and then go, okay, I'm going out to vlog and then go get in my car and vlog so that I can be in bed in time with my husband. Like I want to hang out with my husband and my dogs, you know, and spend some time with them and watch TV and things like that. So it's like, I don't want my entire day to be devoted to, um, you know, all of that, even though I love doing it, I think It's always interesting to me because like the one criticism that people like that don't like me, well, I mean, they give me a lot of criticisms. Oh, what is going on with the camera? Hello. Um, I mean, I get a lot of criticisms, but one of the criticisms that people will say is, you know, like you don't even really work that hard. Like I got this comment on a Q and A that Alex and I did and um, somebody said, does it ever bother Alex that you don't really work that hard and he has to get up and go to work every day? And um, and it was interesting because <clears throat> we were out to dinner and somebody kind of like, they didn't ask it that rudely, but they asked Alex like a question like, you know, but in a nicer way, like a friend of ours was like, is it hard for you? Like, you know, when Peter is at home all day with the dogs and whatever and, and Alex is like, Peter literally works nonstop from the moment that he gets up filming and posting videos. And yes, he loves doing it, but he's still working nonstop. And he said, and on top of that, he's cleaning the house, doing laundry, taking the dogs outside, feeding the dogs, running all the errands for the house, you know, so that everything's nice when I come through the door. And he was like, you know, I don't think people really see how hard Peter works throughout a day. And it really made me feel good. And, and then Alex on top of that was like, not to mention that Peter had, you know, like a 15, plus year career before, um, because I did work after I left the treatment facility. Um, but he, you know, had a 15 year plus career, um, before he ever got on YouTube and did any of this kind of stuff. So it's like, you know, Peter's worked very hard in his life and it really made me happy. I was like, you know, Alex and he, and I know that he sees that because he's so supportive of it and stuff like that. But I think that a lot of people, 
because I do manage my time rather well, but I talk about how I don't manage my time well because I wish I managed it better. But I think sometimes when I stand back, like if you ever stand back and you look at the truth and you're like, no, you know what? I really do manage my time pretty well. I still get up late. I go to bed late. I mean, I was thinking about this tonight. I was like, I get to watch these shows and listen to my audiobooks, and I go to bed when I want to go to bed and I still get all of my stuff done and, you know, like, and I still get to hang out with my husband and do all this kind of stuff. So what am I really complaining about, you know? I shouldn't. Um, I should be grateful and, and continue to remember that. And I do a pretty good job of managing my time and getting stuff done, you know, on top of like returning emails and all this other kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I like, um, I don't know. It made me happy when he said that though. Because I think sometimes people. Maybe it's because I make it look easy. I don't know. But, like, there is a lot of back-end stuff that goes into what I do. You know, even just, like, a review video, for example, okay? Like, let's say if I'm going to go and I'm going to go to Crumble Cookies to review a video. Well, first of all, like, I know this is going to... You guys are going to be like, oh, that doesn't even count. I have to take the dogs outside before I go. I have to get everything ready, okay? So... That's, you know, get my camera ready, do all that kind of stuff, because I can't tell you how many times I've gotten Crumble Cookies and forgotten my um, camera. Get all that done, then I have to drive to Crumble Cookies, then I have to sit in the car, I have to go inside and order the cookies, and I have to do come outside, order the video, or order the video, do the video in my car, okay? And then, usually, I run some errands while I'm out, so then I come home, and I render the video, and then I upload the video, and clip and cut the thumbnail and everything. So all of that together takes a couple hours for me to do one review video. It's not just like I run to crumble cookies and I eat some cookies. Yeah, I know it looks like that and I love doing that, right? Because I feel like, oh my God, it's so much fun. I mean, how lucky am I to do that? But it takes some time. You know, on top of it, it's like, okay, if I'm gonna go to Richie Woods, do the crumble cookies and blah, 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 and I try to like, you know, pace it out. But, like, like, I say all the time to Tanya, you know, like, cause she always says, if that's the worst thing that happens in my day, then I've got a pretty good life. You know, these people are totally snowed in. There is no way. They, like, plow the snow up right up to their driveway. But, like, I mean, if that's my life, having to figure out how to do a crumble cookies review, I mean, let's be for real, Peter. You know, I have a really blessed life. If that is my life, if that is my life, I have a really blessed life, and I am fully aware of that. Um, but... And I like being busy. You know, I really do. I actually, um, I feel better. Like today, I was like, I'm not going to film any videos. Alex is home. Um, I'm just going to sit here and watch this show. And like he was watching shows, you know, this early evening. I was like, but I got stuff done. I was done by like 6 o'clock tonight. Well, was I? Yeah, because I lay down at like eight and I just slept until like 12.30. Slept like four and a half hours. Um, well, no, it was like 8.15 when I lay down. But, um, I was like, I'm not gonna film any videos today. And I was like, that is so stupid. I've got things I wanna talk about. I've got things I wanna do. I really wanted to do the bark box review and I didn't get to it. So. I feel so blessed to have what I, to do what I get to do, you know? I was thinking about this today. This idea. I was watching somebody's video. Whose video was I watching? I've been watching the most random YouTube videos, you guys. Who was I watching? even know who I was watching I can't remember but anyway it got me thinking and I was like I could literally I can post I can film and post videos about whatever I want you know like even on my drama channel if I wanted to film some just random video that had no bearing on that channel whatsoever and had nothing to do with that channel like I could if I wanted to you know and um I could do whatever I wanted to do over there I can do whatever I want to do on any of my channels, you know what I mean? And I love that. It makes me happy. Um, this is 
so pretty over here. I wish you guys could see it. It's just, um, well, when I pull around, I'll show you. It's this white church out here. But then there's this, um, this little graveyard in the front. And it's filled with snow. Isn't there a famous poem that's called something like Snow is on the gravestone or something like that? I feel like there's like an Emily Dickinson poem that's like famous. It's like that. Come on, don't go out of focus. I can't believe the camera has gone this long. Am I for real? Like, am I at like an hour and 15 minutes? And it's gone this long and it hasn't stopped yet. So anyway, yeah, so I wasn't gonna film videos today, but I got up and I was like, you know what? Like, why not? Like, oh, and look, the battery just started flashing red. I should have known as soon as I said that it was gonna start doing that. Hold on, let me pull in here before I get any further. Let me change this, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Now I have that Paris Hilton song stuck in my head. I have the Paris Hilton song stuck in my head, and then <laughs> I've been watching Amber Lynn Reed videos. I think maybe that was what it was. Amber Lynn Reed was going through her earrings on her video, and I was like, <laughs> I can literally just show a drawer and be like, this is my drawer, and I've been going through my drawer. <laughs> I have this in my drawer, and I have that in my drawer. <laughs> I think that might have been it, I don't know. But anyway, um, I have her song stuck in my head that uh, come into the kitchen, have a cup of coffee, or whatever it is in the morning of the beginning of her video that she plays. And then the star, Stars Are Blind, that's what the song is called, Stars Are Blind by Paris Hilton. I used to love that song back in the day, like I said. But anyway, um, this road is like really clear. I think this guy just cleared it or something because it's like really clear. I can't believe I've gone this long vlogging tonight. I thought I was only going to vlog for like a little period of time. But anyway, yeah. So I made those videos and I always feel that way. I'm like, when I want to take like a day off, which I think is fine to do, but when I want to take a day off, I'm also like, there's no reason for you not to sit there and film some stuff, you know? So, so, like Sundays, some days I don't, like on Sundays, I don't film. Like this Sunday we have our live stream for the True Crime Book Club over Bonnie and Clyde. Depend and then we go to brunch first. Depending on how I feel afterwards, I may not film anything, you know? Because sometimes I'm just kind of like really tired and it's nice for me to take a day, but we're going to Miami next week. Um, and when I'm in Miami, I historically don't film on all of my channels when I'm in Miami. And I don't, like, I used to back in the day, this is so funny, I used to pre-film for like, if you guys watch my channel like a couple years ago, I used to pre-film like for every one of my channels. I can remember, I think it was the time that we went to Miami for Ultra Music Festival. This would have been the last time that we went to Ultra, and then we went to Mexico for like seven days after, so we were gone for like 10 days or something like that. I think I filmed a Peterisms video, a review, and a review video for every day that I was gone. And I think I also filmed a few booktube videos in between. I hadn't started Peter's Does Stuff channel yet. And then, because that would be easy to film on vacation. I would just show stuff I was doing on vacation, you know, show places. But then, um, I also, back in the day, this is so silly, I was always really apprehensive to film on my phone. And now, like, I think my phone is better quality 
video than my actual camera does, in all honesty. So, like, when I'm out and about, like, to vlog on my phone is so much better, and I feel like it, the image is better, too. Like, today when I was, like, I was looking at the image because I filmed it on my phone, being out at Richie Woods, and when I vlog in stores and stuff, I'm just, like, the quality of the video is really good. Um... So yeah, so that, and um, what was I saying? But I used to go in pre-film videos. I don't know, but now that I'm saying it, I'm like, well, why wouldn't you pre-film videos? So maybe I will try to pre-film some videos for, um, for the Peterisms channel. It's rather easy, honestly. I just sit down there for like an extra hour or two, and I just do back-to-back -back Peterisms video. The, the thing that's tough is I start losing my voice at some point. Um, and, but like if I get up early and I have a long day, that would be a day where I can do that. One of those days, I can remember, I literally just went Starbucks, 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 and I did all these reviews. It was really fun. When was that? I feel like I, that was not too long ago that I did that, actually, and pre-filmed a bunch of videos. That was fun. And, um, but yeah, I start losing my voice over time. The other thing is that then when I upload them, um, it's I have a hard time keeping track of like, so like when I, cause you know, like I'll render a video and I'll call it like, let's say Thursday or Friday. And then the next one I'll call Saturday and then Sunday because I have to make sure that I upload them and then schedule them for the right day. Um, or else I have all these videos that I don't know when I'm going to post them, you know? And then people are so nice and they're like, just don't pre-film videos. Just do you enjoy your vacation and stuff like that. And, but I like to, I don't know. I, it makes me feel like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just, I love it so much. I just, I just feel so blessed and so honored that I get to do this every single day of my life, you know? And so like when I go on vacation and I have these videos pre-filmed, it makes me feel more deserving of my vacation. I don't know how to explain that, it just does. And um, and also like one of the things that I love to do is just like post the videos and read the comments. And so when I'm on vacation and like all of my videos are pre-filmed, except for like my drama and my vlog, which you guys know I always do that when I'm gone, then it's like, I those videos I get to post throughout the day, like the review and the Peterisms, and then just like read the comments, like while I'm sitting there at lunch or something like that, or having a Diet Coke by the pool, and it's really fun for me, you know? So, yeah. Yep. But I'm excited about next week. We've got some fun things planned while we're down there, some special dinners and stuff. And uh, it'll be fun. We're not there for very long. We're just there for a couple days for Valentine's Day. Yeah, I think we're just down there for a couple nights. And then I come back and then it's my ladies trip in a couple weeks. And then we're going back down to Florida for Ultra. And then we're staying down there for some extra days. And then I gotta figure out my birthday trip. Mm. We still have to figure out if we're gonna do a month down in Florida. So for my husband to do that, he has to like put a proposal together of what that would like look like and things like that. Somebody asked on the video, they said, why would Alex have to come back for meetings? Why couldn't he just assume the meetings? So it has to do with the nature of a certain kind of meetings that I couldn't really explain without getting into specifics of what he does, which that's not my place to do. Um, that he can't do them like via, I mean, there's some meetings that you can't have. Oh, the snow is blowing over the show you guys this. It's like this field, right? Of just like snow. And the snow is like blowing across the road. It's actually really pretty. Um, but there's like some meetings that you have to, you know, Alex does contractual work through several different businesses and there's certain businesses that he does that 
that are certain things that he does that he has to, um, his, you know, be, he has like main thing and then he has other things that he does and there's, you know, several things that he has to just, he would have to be here for that would have to be like, you know, that are like tactile text, you know, like where you have to be able to interact and see that it's not about just like a meeting, like a zoom meeting, like talking. It's like, he would actually have to be there in person to like look at certain things and, um, evaluate things and stuff like that. Anyway, that's really the only way I can explain it. Which even that wouldn't really be that big of a deal because like, let's say he, what he would do is he would, um, like let, let's say if I drove him to the airport, if he had to do it twice and I drove him to the airport on like a Sunday night and he had meetings all day morning on Monday, he'd fly in like Sunday night, go to his meetings on Monday because they're usually done by like noon, probably check on the house, you know, after he's done checking on the house and whatever, fly out and be back by early evening. So it's like, if he only had to do that like twice, um, you know, like that wouldn't be bad. It'd be like a day that he would miss, which whatever, you know? I mean, if we ever go back and forth to Florida full time anyway, that would be a reality of what one of us would probably do that we would have to go back and forth to like check on the house or do this or whatever, you know? Um, so, <sighs> and I've also kind of like started just like reaching out to some people like, um, like some of Alex's family and our two neighbors across the street and next to us um, and asking them as far as like, if we were gone for that long, like, you know, would they watch the place? Do they have anybody that would want to house sit? Things like that for that long. I mean, we don't really need somebody to be there 24 hours a day. I mean, there's, we don't have anything that's worth anything to just sit there and house sit, you know, but like, you know, come in and look and stuff like that. But it would also depend on if I had my plants by then too. I've been thinking a lot about the plants. Like why am I so concerned about the plants? I don't know, but I've been very concerned about the plants that if I got my plants before we left to Florida, who would take care of my plants before I left? Which means I wouldn't be able to get my plants until after we left for, got back from Florida. But then that would be like the end of May. So, you know, ideally, if Alex and I at some point get a place in Florida and we go back and forth, it was so funny because today Tanya's son, Nick, was like, why don't, uh, when I was at the kennel, he was like, why don't you guys just buy a place in Florida? And I go, because that's, he goes, you guys are down there all the time. And um, I was putting the dates in the, um, at the kennel for the dogs. And he goes, why don't you guys just get a place in Florida? And I go, because that's rather expensive, Nick. Um, I mean, I would... I would love to be able to afford a place, but like the places that we have looked at are like, that are like two bedroom, two bathroom in like Miami, like cause Alex is constantly on Zillow. And um, I actually, you know, he's looking at all these different places and then we, like the agents that we've worked with have sent us stuff. And I mean, we have a price point that we've looked at, but like to have anything in that area that is, has some space that you're not right on top of each other and would be how we wanted it to be. I mean, you're looking at three, 350 to 500,000, honestly. And we don't have that kind of, I mean, we don't have that. It's a lot of money, you know? And also we want to redo the house, the condo here. And so even if we had money to put into that, so it's like, where do we want to put our money first is kind of a lot of, um, you know, what we're looking at. And, and the agents that we've worked with, they have told us this is the worst time to buy in Florida. Don't do it right now because the, the, you know, everything's really high and it, it'll drop again, but don't do it right now. So that's another reason. I honestly, in 100% honest at this point, um, I would be completely fine with getting our condo fixed 
to be this dream condo that we want. And then going to Florida or San Diego or Arizona or <clears throat> the East Coast or wherever and renting an Airbnb for a month here and a month there and whatever. And no, I wouldn't feel like I was wasting that money because they would be different life experiences. It would be like the same as putting that money into a house except for that we wouldn't be getting that money back, right? Um, now, if I came into some money, you know, and I like saved a lot of money and we were able to put that into a house, you know, I mean, we do have savings, but not $500,000 in savings, but like, you know, that we could put into a house. But if we did, um, then yeah, I would look, why is this rattling? I would look at getting a house in Florida in a complete, completely different way. So, I don't know, you know. We'll have to still think about it and look at it. I mean, we really want to look in certain areas while we're down there still. But, like, I mean, we love Brickell and Midtown. That would be where we would want to be if we were in. I mean, well, personally, I would love to be two blocks from the ocean on South, in South Beach, you know. To have something at, like, I don't like, like, 9th and Washington or something like that, you know. Well, Collins would be, like, amazing in South Beach. But, like, you're talking unbelievable amounts of money, right? And some old stucco two-story building. I think that would be so cute. But the thing is, it, it really wouldn't be that cute because you're talking about probably a three, four hundred square foot studio and you're going to pay a $2,000 a month for it. <laughs> that so no, I don't like that, isn't it? When you can go to Brickell or you could go to Midtown, and Midtown actually is the most affordable of all of it. Um, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of downtown Indianapolis. It's cute. Um, and there's a lot of cute restaurants. There's like Pilates and all kinds of stuff there, you know. So I don't know. And we haven't completely I didn't think that I wanted to be in Fort Lauderdale, but we I don't know. I mean we've talked about it a little bit. Alex could commute to Miami if he worked in Miami. Um, and he's got some job opportunities. That's the other thing that we've been kind of waiting on. He has um, a job opportunity through some friends of ours that we're kind of seeing what could possibly happen with that. And um, if that was something where Alex would have to be in Miami more, you know, I can be wherever. So for me, and I honestly, like, I have no problem hopping in a car with the dogs and driving a day to get to Miami. Like, not at all. I have no problem with that. Um, you know, some of those areas, like Brickell, it is so, it is snowing over here. It's pretty. Some of those areas, like Brickell, you can um, rent Airbnbs for rather affordable. So, I mean, if we had to do that, we could do that too. But I will say this. If it was going to be something where we were going to be going specifically just to Miami, like, let's say, for two months at a time, twice a year, or something like that, or Alex was going to work down there, and so he had to fly to Miami, like, once a month, or we had to be down there, like, every other month, or whatever, we would buy a place down there. At that point, then, it would become ridiculous for us not to invest in a place in Miami or around that area where we were getting our money's worth out of it instead of just having experiences. Does that make sense? Like it would be stupid. I have to say one of the things I am the, the happiest about was investing money in my mortgage because you know, like owning a place, I think it's just as you get older. I remember when I was um, working in treatment, I had this guy that I worked with and at the time he was like 50 and I was, you know, my mid to late 20s. And I remember I asked him one time, I said, if you, what's one thing that you wish you had known at my age that you know now? And he said, I wish I had started buying a house. And I said, really, I thought it was the strangest piece of advice. I said, weird, just weird, off, you know, why that? And I said, it didn't make any sense. And I said, why is that the one thing that you wish? And he said, because it's the one thing they can't take away from you once you, like, you know, um, pay it off. You own it outright. And, he was like, I just, I wish I had owned a house outright. And I can remember him saying that, you know? So, there is a lot to be said for that. And 
owning property and stuff like that. So, but anyway, um, There's, you know, I think because I got sober early and then I had to start thinking a lot about my finances early. I do think that that is one thing that I did smart. I love when people comment and they're like, oh, Peter is like a trust fund kid or Peter, like, his mother left him all this money. I'm like, <laughs> I wish. She left me with debt. <laughs> she did, truly. I didn't realize you could be left debt, but I was left credit card debt um, by my mother. And, um, which that's a long story. I think I've told that on here before. But no, no trust fund. I think with the exception of, like, one or two, maybe two, times in 27 years. My dad has never given me money, not even for a Christmas gift. Um, and any money that he has ever given me, I have paid him back 100%. Because we had that money and I didn't want our relationship defined by finances. And, and he agreed with that and he was like, yeah, no, I totally agree. I think that's great. I don't want to have a relationship you know, bound out of your need for finances and money. So, nope, no trust fund here. In fact, it's interesting because, like, friends of mine will be like, oh, our parents gave us $5,000 for Christmas. They gave us $5,000 for Christmas every year. Or I have friends of mine that'll be like, oh, yeah, our parents put down $100,000 on our house because they want us to enjoy, um, they want to be able to enjoy giving us money now before they die and stuff like that. My dad would never because of that because of that conversation. He would never, 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 never do anything like that. So. We don't actually really do big deal Christmas presents with, or birthday presents and stuff with my dad and my stepmom. I don't, I mean, we don't really do anything. Maybe like a basket of stuff or they'll get us like car washes and stuff like that or something like that but watches a couple years ago my dad got us matching watches he loves that i don't know if that it's like that uh catalog hum one that hum one. it's like sharper image i can't pronounce it but it's like sharper image but anyway he always orders stuff out of there and so he like but if he buys one for like one of us he buys like the same thing so like he he, he bought us matching watches which was cute and, um, so yeah, I'm thankful I don't have that relationship with my dad today, you know? Okay, I went in and I started telling this story, which was probably a little bit too much, so I didn't need to tell that story about something else that another friend told me, so we'll just, we'll just end it, uh, <laughs> right there with all of that. But no, like, you know, I don't feel entitled to any of that. And that's really freeing too, you know, because what that does is it takes that like peace out. Like one of the things that I, one of the things that's really hard for me is that when people will say things like, but your dad's a plastic surgeon, like your dad was, a, yeah, okay. But like my dad was like a really hardworking man. Like he was really, he has a lot of integrity about how hard he worked, you know? And he got up at the, crack ASSS of dawn and was out of the house cold or you know sunshine and didn't come home late from board meetings and hospital meetings and on and on and on you know but always was present for everything that I ever did in school and showed up to every family group that I had when I was in treatment programs and you know was always there for me and just really showed me what a father was and what a man was you know um, and I'm just, I feel so honored about that. And that doesn't have anything to do with the, the value of his bank account or his pocketbook or whatever. I mean, the, my dad has taught me what a person of character is and a person of integrity and, and that is priceless. And, um, you know, I'd rather have that than the rest of it. 
I think the other thing is this that's important is that my dad taught me how to learn to take care of myself and how to live on my means and not have to depend on him. And, and I'm super thankful for that. I'm super thankful to be at a point where my dad and I can have a relationship that has no bearing on me needing him to give me money or being scared of how I'm going to survive if he doesn't or anything like that. And I did feel like that in my early 20s before I got sober. And I would even say like my first couple of years sober, you know, I was terrified of... Well, even after I had that conversation with my dad, I was scared, like, well, what if something happens? Or what if, you know, what am I going to do? And whatever. And, you know, a lot of me in the last couple years reaching out to other people for help, whether it had to do with, like, my car or, you know, taxes or whatever. When I used to go to my dad for, like, everything, and I'd say, Dad, what do I do about this? Dad, what do I do about that? Dad, what do I do about this? was not to not depend on my dad anymore, was so that my dad and I could have conversations about, hey, have you read this book by John Grisham? Like we had the, you know, a couple weeks ago or whatever. Or, hey, you know, like, have you ever door dashed this or whatever? Or, what are you doing? Oh, I'm reading this book. I'm watching this TV show. You know, like, that allows me to have that so I don't have to go to my dad for that stuff anymore. And it's also taught me to be really self-reliant and grow up and be an adult, you know? I mean, like, start, start to adult. I can remember when I went to go buy my first car. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I was in my late 20s, and I went, and it was this Bronco, this Ford Bronco. It was pearl color. Oh, God, it was so beautiful. And I had this DVD player on the back, and I loved it. I loved this thing. It was extended Bronco. It was huge. And it was pearl color. It was beautiful. And um, I can remember when I went to um, buy it. And I was so proud of myself, you know, that I, I drove into this lot and I exchanged my car. And, you know, they gave me what they thought it was worth and whatnot. And um, I can remember some other people. I, I feel like if I'm remembering this correctly, that other people were like, you paid way too much for that car. But my dad was, like, proud of me. My dad was like, no, you did a good job. I'm really proud of you for that, you know? Like, maybe you paid a little bit too much for that car, but you did good. Um, and, in fact, I can remember when I went, because I got that car and I got my next car, CarMax. Um, and it was a, the second car that I got was a Ford Escape. And um, I had driven a Ford Escape as like a rental car, like on a couple of different occasions. And I really liked them because they were small and they, but they were still an SUV and I love SUV. I've always driven SUVs. Never every car that I, well, almost every car that I've ever had has been an SUV. The exception of like one or two. No? Yeah. And, um, one. But anyway, um, so I, I had driven this Ford Escape, and I really, really liked this Ford Escape. And uh, this is so funny, but I really liked it because it had an auxiliary cord. Okay, you guys, this is back in the day. It had an auxiliary cord so I can listen to my audiobooks and I could listen to music from my phone. I don't, don't ask me why I was so excited about that. I can remember saying something to somebody later about I had an auxiliary cord, and they were like, yeah, so does everybody. And I was like, oh, how rude. I was so excited about this. But anyway... So I went there, and there were like three cars that I looked at. I looked at a, a like a, a Ford Escape, and it had like twenty thousand miles on it. It was pretty good, like price for the Ford Escape. And then I looked at like a Land Rover. <laughs> was it like a Range Rover or a Land Rover? I think it was a Range Rover. And it was like I because I've always wanted a Range Rover, and it was like a ridiculous. It was a Land Rover or a Range Rover? I can't remember. But anyway, it was like a ridiculous price and had like eighty thousand miles on it. And then something else I looked at too. There was like. Two Two cars I looked at that were like ridiculous, but they were super nice cars, but they had too many miles on them and they weren't in good shape. And then there was the Ford Escape and I called my dad and I was like, I don't know what to do. And I'll never forget. My dad was like, yes, you do. He was like, you know exactly what to do. And he was like, I, you didn't need to call me. And I was like, so you think I should get the Ford Escape? And he said, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but he goes, you know what to do. And so I got the Ford Escape, and I can remember my dad, I think that's how the conversation went, but my dad, my dad was like, no, see, I knew you'd make the right decision, you know? 
because it was smarter for me to get to lower the car with a better gas mileage. It didn't have a lot of miles on it. That was less money, you know? And I loved that car. I loved that Ford Escape until it died on me and then I had to get this. Now I'm like, I don't know what to get next. I had kind of resigned myself to the fact that I wanted to get um, a Jeep Wrangler that I really thought after Alex driving his, that would that would be my next car. If honestly, if I was closer to paying this car off, I would get a Jeep Wrangler um, if we, to drive down to Florida. I know that it sounds so stupid, doesn't it? But to drive down to Florida and then, but the thing is, is that they don't have huge space in the back. Um, so I'm kind of like, well, keep this maybe going through to going through to Florida if we drive down there for a month and then when I come back I mean I'm not I don't even know how close I am to paying this car off I still have quite a bit on it I don't know but I think that's going to be my next car a Jeep Wrangler I don't know if I want a soft top or a hard top though. But Alex loves his Jeep Wrangler. And he, do you know what is one of the funniest things? Do you know what, first of all, it wasn't a super smooth ride, which was one of the reasons why I didn't like it. But the other reason was that, do you know when I looked to see where I could put my camera for vlogging, there was like not a good spot for me to put that. Isn't that so funny? I feel like people for a while were really, really into Jeep Wranglers and now people aren't as much into Jeep Wranglers. I feel like that's kind of dying out a little bit. Do you feel like that? I still like them. I still think they're fun. I don't know. Then I think that I really like this car. So maybe I'll get another Jeep Cherokee, you know? I will tell you one of the things that's interesting to me is that in all the time that Alex has had his car, I have never once, like... Have I driven it? If I drove it, it was like the first day or two that he had it, just around the na the neighborhood. I haven't had really any desire to like go drive his car, or like been like, oh, you know, like, oh, I want to drive this for a while. Like I haven't really ever thought that, which is so funny because you would think that maybe I would feel that way, you know, but I haven't. And as much as I love the Range Rovers, even if I could afford it, I don't know. If I could afford it, I would probably get a Range Rover or a Porsche. Oh, God. But I don't know what I would get. I kind of like these new Porsche. They're like Cayenne Coupes. Have you seen them? They're kind of cool. They're kind of like SUVs, but smaller. I like those. But I really like the Porsche Cayennes. I really love the Porsche Carreras from back in the day. But I mean, that's such an unrealistic car to drive, especially around here. Um, but, I mean, if I could have like five cars or something, <laughs> you, you kind of get to the point in your life where you realize that's not happening, you know. Um, but if I could afford a Range Rover, I don't even know that I, I... It's like a really big car. Like, I don't know that I need that much. I don't know that I would drive that. It's still lightly snowing. The snow is supposed to stop at 6 a.m. I've been talking for a really long time tonight. I don't even know. This is the second battery that's like, it's not flashing yet, but it just went to the halfway mark. I don't even know how long I've been vlogging now. What time did I start? Like one some, I have, I have not been. Am I like over an hour and a half from vlogging? I can't be. It was one something when I started though, right? Because I looked at the clock and I said I woke up at like an hour ago or something and it, I watched that show and it was like 1.45. Oh my Lord. Well, I'm gonna get off here now and listen to some of my audio book. <laughs> anyway, um, this has been fun tonight. I've talked about all kinds of stuff. And uh, yeah, so thanks for listening to me and um, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. 
Um, remember these things, these three things that you can start your day over whenever you want, that uh, to, you can start your day over whenever you want to practice random acts of kindness, and most importantly, to make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know, and let, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. And I just want you guys to know how much you mean to me, and I love you. Thank you for listening. Get ready for the weekend. <laughs> it's going to be a fun weekend at home. And I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love you.